Yes. I haven't seen you since the Ryan show. Very fun. I know, it was a dope show. He uh, premiered his track, Nuno. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Dope so, video, too. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. It was dope. And it sounds crazy in the club. Mm hmm. It sounds crazy in the club. So I haven't seen you since August. So here you are, you're in Miami. You know, we're linking up. Yeah. Um, what's going on? Like, what's new? Man, I'm gearing up for this crazy product after coming off of the end of the beginning. Um, I've been promoting it a little bit, just giving a little bit of hints on my Instagram, basically. And um, this this project is gonna be big, like it big, like the music is gonna speak for itself. I just wanna just des describe it right now. Okay. You know? Okay. All right. Well, we're about to rock with this. Word. So this new project is called Rebel Without a Cause. Okay. And this is gonna be slightly different than you know, the end of the beginning. Yeah. Oh, slightly different, how so? Um, this one is more dark and it's, it's, it's up, upbeat, but at the same time, it's like very mellow. It's like a, it's a weird, weird chemistry going on and it's like a lot of emotions mixed in one. And the end of the beginning was, was more um, about the past. This one is more about like right now, where mm -hmm. I'm at in life right now slowly touching on the past like every other once in a while but this one is more about the present okay cool cool so your last project the end of the beginning it was kind of um almost like you were naming a time period of your life mm -hmm. the beginning so if that's the beginning where are we at now with mike this is i would say the start of a new chapter you know what I mean? I was getting my feet wet before, and I was feeling, getting a feel for the industry last year, and now I feel like I got the grasp of it, and I'm ready to go in. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. Okay. Cool. I know um, one song that stood out from your last project, the end mm -hmm. of the beginning, uh, was "Nowhere Fast." Yeah. And it's interesting because you're young. People don't know you're 22. Yeah. And I'm 20. So, you know, you're young, yeah. and in your previous project, this, the track Nowhere Fast, you were saying, you know, talking about dropping out of school, yeah. the college struggle. Yeah. So, you know, is that something that you think the game doesn't really have right now? Somebody so young who's just really coming up in the music. Yeah, I mean, not really because when I did a, another, uh, another piece with someone else, they kept saying I had a lot of parallels to Kanye and how he dropped out of school and then he went into the music business to do like pursue his dream or whatever. So um I don't think anybody has that same story right now. It's not the same story as Kanye. I'm a lot different from him, but we have very similar attributes, but I don't think anybody in the game has that that uh It's a certain niche. Yeah. Yeah. That spark, you know. Yeah, and it's the fact that you're so relatable. Yeah. You're talking about dropping out. I'm 20, I'm in college also. <laughs> yeah. I think about dropping out all the time, but wow, I can turn on to your record and, you know, be like, oh, you know, he's around the same age as me. So it makes yeah. sense. It's cool. And then, I mean, there was another track, um, Like Me and Jump On It. Yeah. And you talk about women and struggles with women and different relationships. Where is that Mike Zombie now? This this Mike, not Mike Zombie right now is, like, it's it's weird. It's like the kind of an opposite. Like, I, ve I switched up. A I didn't really change, but, like, where my life is at now, I don't really have the time to focus on love and girls, but I do dabble with the girls when I can. Mm -hmm. So I even have a song on my own on Rebel Without a Cause where the hook goes, uh, I ain't in love, it's getting scary. I don't think a nigga could now, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So back then I was like doing spiteful songs about my exes and now I'm kind of like free with it and exploring relationships right now. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. Word, word. So, tell me more about A Rebel Without a Cause because, of course, we've got to get to the Drake topics as well. Right, and right, right. Um, Rebel Without a Cause is very ignorant. It's like, very, it's humble cocky. Like, I don't feel like I'm where I need to be, but I feel like on this, this project, like, 
a lot of my my lyrical content on the on the end of the beginning was me talking about how I was underrated as an artist. And I feel like once I dropped the 616 video and people got a chance to get a feel for me being on another platform, seeing me on TV, and then they would check out the end and beginning. Now I feel like people are starting to get it, like maybe this kid's on or something. So mm -hmm. that's what this one's more about. And me, I'm focusing a lot more on melody, so I sound a lot of different on a lot of songs. I mm -hmm. got a lot of better, like a lot of better with my delivery. Mm -hmm. So this one is just a different feel, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I talk about a lot of personal issues with family. Mm -hmm. I talk about um, uh, having a bit of financial stability, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's gonna be. It's it's a lot of stuff that I've been hesitant to say mm -hmm. that I'm just saying. Like I've been doing songs, and after I record, I'm saying I'm not taking this off. Mm -hmm. And my friends would be in the studio. I, there's a song where I, I started off like, um, um, uh, what did I say? I said, uh, Chris told me, F it, go and talk crazy. I am yay, reincarnated. From now on, I ain't taking back. Ish, that I'm saying, you know? So that's how You're I feel. You're saying things and you feel it. Yeah, so once you I say it. it, I'm not taking it back. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know? Yeah. I'm meaning when I say this song. You know, that's what's up. As I always do, but this one is more blunt. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm that's what's up. Mm. Okay, okay. Interesting. So you you're saying things and you mean it, and you're not looking back. This is kind of looking for it yeah, at it's, all times. it sticks. It sticks this time. <laughs> so when you were like making this new project, do you ever like send a song to like Khaled or Drake and you know ask for your peers' opinions? Um, or is yeah. everything kind of like, do you actually, you're a rebel without a cause? Like, this is what I'm putting on it. I don't, no feedback. I yeah, I mean, want. really, I mean, some t only if I agree. If someone says like, oh, I don't really like that. I don't really like this. And then, and this is one thing I've learned by making music, period. Like, it could be one person that don't like it. But if 10 people in a room, or let's say I'm in, a, in 10 different rooms and 10 and nine people say that they like it, and mm -hmm. the only one person said that they like it. Mm -hmm. It, it's obvious mm -hmm. that it's, it's good, you know, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everybody's gonna have their opinion, and yeah. nine to one is obvious, you know. Do you feel with your new project, Rebel Without a Cause? Did you feel pressure to have to keep up with the trends? You know, there's a lot of people putting out club bangers these days. See, and this, hit records. this is the difference Total. from my music than other people's music and that's the difference between the end of the beginning and this one the last one I was using tracks that I thought that nobody else would want mm -hmm. that I've already played for people mm -hmm. so this time it's gonna be like damn why hasn't so-and-so took this and yeah. why hasn't so-and-so took that beat yeah, yeah. and it's the production on there is yeah. phenomenal you so, know you know what's interesting is when you did the starter from the bottom beat mm -hmm. When people heard that on the radio at first, I think a lot of people were kind of like conf caught off guard because mm -hmm. that's not a beat that some an artist would normally select. But right. Drake took it and made it into this crazy record. It was, it, it takes it a special you, ear, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, I think some artists are afraid to take that risk, but mm -hmm. you know, it's like ahead of the time, that sound, you yeah. know? And so you're out, you, your project's gonna have like a lot of that. Yeah, it's, it. it's, a, yeah. it's definitely, a lot of left field, left field. rap hard hitting beats that that you're not gonna expect me to be rapping on. And one song that I have on there is so slow, but it makes you so hype. Mm -hmm. It's like a paradox. I love the song, but mm -hmm. what's that song called? Perfect night. Perfect night. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. That's it's, what's up. Okay. It's like a turn up song, but it's very melodic. Very right. melodic. And with your project. You're producing everything? Mm hmm Everything's produced by you. Yes. And you're rapping on everything. Yeah. Smart guy. Yeah. You're on your Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smart guy. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. So what are you currently doing now in preparation for putting the project out? When should we expect this? The date is December 23rd. Is there something significant with that date? Well, the end of the beginning was released the 22nd of last year, so Good. I thought it would be safe to keep up the trend you know cool, cool. so that's the date and what I'm doing right now I'm just putting the finishing touches on it just ordering the songs um I'm not done recording till I'm done recording so that can 
that's that's up for grabs, whatever. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. So there's no complete rebel without a cause, as we speak. Like we don't as know. As we speak, like, keep going. And it going. could be. It could. It could be complete. Mm-hmm. So, um, it could be complete. I'm already. I already got the name for my next project, so I'm. I'm there with it. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah, right now there's there's no complete rebel without a cause, oh. and. And how are you putting the project out? Are you putting it out on iTunes? This is iTunes Worldwide. Okay, cool, yes. cool. And your last project, did you put that out through Ryan's app? That was, no, that was that Piff. That Piff, okay, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Because I know you, you know Ryan and yeah. cool. Yeah, talking business every year. Yeah, you know that's my guy. Word. Shout out to Ryan. Word, Arles, <laughs> or Prez. Um, okay, cool. So this is going to be on iTunes. Yes. And can people pre-order this? Yes, it's definitely going to have a pre-order feature too, and that's okay. going to be dope. This is this is a, something I haven't done before, so mm-hmm. it's going to be a new experience for the people who just started getting on board because of the six one six or whatever. So it's going to be dope. I can't wait. I'm okay. excited. I'm excited too. Yeah. I'm excited too, and of course I'll get the word out about that. That's important. You're putting this out independently, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, what a lot of people may or may not understand is. You're you're signed to OVO Sound as a producer, right? And so, how does that work? Um, well, I do in-house production for the team over there. Salute to them. Um, and then on the side, I just do me. You know, um, waiting for another situation that could put me to the next uh, level. And when it comes, I feel like it's going to be a good thing for me, and maybe it can help out both ways, you know? Word. You kind of have, like, a Travis Scott thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who don't know that, yeah. Travis Scott also has a record deal with Grand Hustle. Yeah, and um, Kanye of Good Beat. Being with OVO um, Sound, who are some of the artists in OVO that you've recently been working with? Um, It's really, like... Are you primarily with Drake? Does P and D hit you up? Does he call you? Um, like, how does that work? I've talked to all of those guys. I mean, but mm-hmm. really, it's not like uh, um, we get into the studio. Those guys be on tour and all that. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we basically do the um, send here, send there. Okay. You know what I mean? When he mm-hmm. get around it, he get to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody's working so much that you don't even. It's like I send the music their way, and if mm-hmm. they pick it up, they pick it up. Mm-hmm. So. You don't even know. It just yeah. didn't happen anymore. Like, I didn't even know Jay-Z was on They Don't Love You No More, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, how was that when you got that call? I didn't even get the call. I heard it on Funk Flex. It was cool, you know what I mean? Yeah. To have a legend like that. That's my big brother's dreams and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Are there any artists out there that you would love to get in the studio with and vibe out and get a sesh going? Who are some you would like to work with? Of course. Well, this is what I say all the time, but um, the four, my four favorites of all time, Wayne, Drake, Eminem, and Kanye, definitely. Um, I think it would be dope to get in with, uh, with um, Chris Miles. He's real cool. Well, actually, I've already been in with him, but more stuff with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I think it would be dope to get in with Travis Scott. I would love to work with Pharrell, Timbaland. Definitely a great Swiss beats. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as new people, I really like uh, OG Mako. Okay. The, okay. You guessed it. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, He's got something different there. Yeah, I like Snooty Wild. Okay. Ray Shrummer. It's a lot of people I okay. would love to work with. So. I always like to end interviews with this question, and it usually stumps people, but it's like, I figure why not ask. Okay. What's one inter- interview question you've never been asked, but you wish you were asked? Hmm. Some people kind of flip it. They're like, what's something that most people don't know about you? But that's the easy way out. <laughs> yeah. Um... When was the moment that I knew I was going to be, I wanted to do music for a living? When was that? I remember, oh man, what was this Neo song? Well, I don't know. It was like around when Timbaland and and Missy Elliott were coming out with uh, all them crazy tracks. And I just didn't know exactly like how a sound came about. I had to be like... 10 or something stupid mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. like I didn't know exactly where the sounds came from how they were made I thought it was just came out of thin air mm-hmm. at the time and then once I found out it came from computers and stuff I went and explored it myself and then my mom bought me FL Studios 
and ever since it's been history. So. And that's where you used to make your beats? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Do you work with like Logic and Pro Tools? Yeah, I could get busy on anything. Word, so. word. I'm the same. You know, I can do a little Logic and Pro Tools. Really? Yeah, you know, being around Yacht all the time. Oh, word. Yeah, of course. Shout out to Yacht. <laughs> yes, Yacht. Drunk and a motherfucker swerving. I hit my problems up like what it's in for. They saying 616 is what the word is. Well, bitches going down if it didn't know. Drunk and a motherfucker swerving. I hit my problems up like what it's in for. They saying 616 is what the word is.